I don't know what to do in a crisis. I didn't know what to do. I just, there didn't seem to be any avenues. He'd cut tendons in his wrist, they, they, but they stitched it up. I explained to the um, doctor who was in charge of him the history of, you know, what had happened before. The psychiatrist came in and was, um, and said that he should be admitted to the psychiatric hospital. He was there for four and a half months and his care there was, was good and um, he thrived the routine there, I think. The staff were just very um, encouraging, really, and they were kind. And the consultant psychiatrist in charge of him was very understanding of him, very human. She was extremely, you know, rushed, under pressure. You know, you felt there should have been about three of her, really. The hospital experience was probably um, what helped him get back onto an even keel. He was discharged to the crisis team and they would um, collect his medication for him, you know, whatever he needed. They, they really were very, very good. He wouldn't say, I'd like a home visit tomorrow. They would suggest it, and, and then he'd say, yes, please, but he, he wouldn't actually ask. He was transferred to the community mental health team and put with a social worker. And then I think the services all changed. So Lawrence was then discharged because they felt that he was okay. I just felt that they couldn't be bothered. Um, there was no sympathy. It was, it was like, well, what do you want us to do? That was the sort of question, what do you want me to do? I mean, I didn't really know what the answer was. I'm not a professional. And when my son told me about the visits from the CPN, they would just have conversations about him buying a new guitar. Nothing that might have helped him move forward. He came over to our house and I was really worried because he'd, he was drinking again and I could see he wasn't right really. And I met up with him because he was really, really upset and he was in a complete state. So I went home and I rang the crisis team number, even though I knew we weren't really under the crisis team anymore. And it was an answering message. The people who were allowed to contact, contact the crisis services have to be on their books. He was, you know, in an emotional state that, that needed someone to help him. And I think if someone had recognised how badly um, ill he was, things may have been different. And he hung up and then he rang back to say, um, I'm, I'm going to say goodbye now because I've had enough. 